We're up in central Idaho bear baiting. We strapped our tree stands to our pack frames and the rest of our junk and away we go. This is where we used to have the bait when we just set it to set a strike bait to see if they'd hit it. And it was kind of cool. Been digging holes for the grease for, we set it last year and come back and there's a foot deep hole here. Got all our steps, putting in our mini duffel bags. Made out of a thousand denier cordura and just for tree steps and things that jab through them, they're super tough and last forever. Setting that tree stand, we decided to move. And it is now in that little teeny dead tree, so good luck on that, Justin. It'll be a moving shot whether the bear's standing still or not in this wind. Trying to fake them out a little bit because they're coming down, but they aren't coming all the way into the bay. They're coming about 40 yards out and sitting there and snapping their teeth at us. See if we can trick them. We'll put a lot of grease and stuff all around, see what we we'll make happen. Reset the baits and all that stuff this morning, and it got hit good last night. Ground blind, the bear ate. Cade and Clint sat in this a few times, went back one night to sit and flipped over and the bear had ripped it up a little with my seat or my chair too. And the inside was all torn up. Still usable though. Just gonna show you our modular trail cam cases. Built, put your trail cameras in, fully padded. But you can put as many of them together as you want. When you got multiple cameras, turn it into one big case. On. Put it in one case. Back them out, keep them protected. Put multiple cameras in it. You got a divider inside of there. That allows you to. If you got smaller cameras, you can put a small one in there and then your batteries and cords or things like that inside if you need to. Also got a place for SD cards and cords and things like that too just to keep it organized. Up that there and then like in here I've got two cameras in that one case. Kind of tough to see but got the divider in there. 
We want to just keep them organized and clean and protected. Not getting our lenses and things all beat up. On our way up, we stopped and ran in and checked the camera. We set out some bagels and a few things. That was about 2 o'clock this afternoon, 1.30. I got here about 5.30 and they were already gone, so it already gotten a hit. Spade's a good one. They moved my camera again, so I don't know if I got pictures or not. Raspberry Warmasters powder here. And I love this stuff. It smells super sweet. You can see when I shake it, it just throws out a, it's about like flour. And it just, goes all over in the wind. I love this stuff. It's a good cover-up scent. Then I had a toad come in last week. But they wouldn't come all the way in. I wish I'd had that extra scent. That uh, sow and heat scent. He came around this back side. Right over there. I thought he was about 30, 40 yards out, so I didn't dare take a shot back and range find it, range, just range finder on it, and he was only 21 yards. That's all right, he never gave me a good shot anyway. So what I did is stuck some of this scent and a few bagels right there at 20 yards, and get down here at 15 or so. That's about straight to it's probably about 14 yards. That way if he happens to come up and around and give me a shot one way or another, we got what looks like a new little bear hidden. I'm guessing that's what came in earlier today. And so we definitely got some good activity. I also got my uh, bottle of caramel, tap of caramel spray that fell out of the tree stand and I didn't want to go down and get it. So hopefully they don't haul it off when they come in. It's also a great cover-up scent. I'll spray that every half hour or so up in the trees a little bit. About where we know they're coming in already, I decided to leave it down for this one. So it's a lot warmer today. We got a pretty good wind, but it's super warm. I'm just wearing my shirt for a change, so I'm gonna quit talking now. It's getting close to six o'clock. fever bait. Clint's got a bag full of bait on our frame. Clint's carrying their hunting pack. Our Yukon. And go in and drop some bait and go hunt. Clint's gonna sit on the bait today. It's the 15th. This is a little tree that the bear climbed up and got to our stinky fish bag. Thank you. 
Just get the fire going just enough with some coals. <coughs> We're gonna dump some some grease out of our grease bucket from Mr. Cadester here. Just let that grease get down in those coals and sit and cook like we're at McDonald's. Nice stink going in there. So we have two trail cameras. We always have problems at this bay with the trail cameras. <coughs> Turned one of them on camera mode to see if we can get some video. Got some rolled oats and bagels and bread and all kinds of crap for them. They didn't come in last night, so hopefully that means they're hungry today. Let's see what happens. Got our tree stand up here. This is the fever bait. Got a lower stand. We got our stinky grease fire going on now. Good one. All right, stinky smoke. Just take a little grease and put on it and get some good smell going. We're on top of the pass, clear up in the timber. Smoking antelope buck. Clear up in the timber in the high country. We're about almost 8,000 feet right here. That's a good buck, too. Ain't good on our way out from the baits. We got a little blood on the log. We have been looking for almost four hours. Bad news though, we just went through the film and we recorded over the kill shot. We just figured out by about a split second. We rewound it when we had a tough time finding her. Rewound it and looked at the shot a few hundred times trying to determine exactly where we hit her. And then when we found her, we threw on the camera and started recording all excited and recorded right over it. So. You can see this blood right there on the tree. And he was actually plowing over saplings like that. And once we got on that, it was pretty easy. And then Clint will take it from here. Well, we just kept finding more blood on the on the tree limbs and logs. We get down here, we can see, I heard him crash through some, some uh, dry branches. I'm assuming this is where it was because Look at this right here, sorry. We've got blood. I've got to show this. There we go, we've got some good blood here on the branches. And, and he got came, a little on that tree right there. He came over across this log here, and when he landed, it let out a big puddle of blood on the stick there. And he got some on that log. We knew we were getting closer when we started finding blood like that. And I saw him jump over this log and then it, I'm guessing he hit and rolled once he jumped over that yeah, one. Yeah, he just then crashed he, and burned. He's uh, laying down here by cage against the tree. And, and we rolled. just got up there and there's his hairball we saw him in. <laughs> Not a monster bear, but freaking good bear for your first one and well earned for sure. And a lot better than my first bear by a long ways. Sure is pretty though, we'll go down and take a look at it. Now, the reason we bought, brought Cade, is to go bring that bad boy out. I'm guessing him at 150. 
Not a big bear. We have a bigger sow that was coming in earlier and then this one, I've got him on video all last night and then decided to send Clint in here today early. We went in, we were gonna try to be here about two or three. We got here I think and left the tree at 3.30. Put out a bunch of stink and good bait and grease and stuff and he was hitting the bait at four. He shot him at 4.05 or so. He was back in within a half an hour. Pretty bear though, that'll make a cool rug. That's a lot more chocolatey than I thought he was. Been up here hunting for a couple of days. We, we, uh, I got into the blind. We had a bear coming in, this bear right here. There was a couple others. Uh, I got up into the blind about 30 minutes later. The bear come in, started eating at the bait site. What time did you? Uh, that was about four. Four o'clock in the you, afternoon. You got in the bait at 3.30, right? You got in the stand. bait at 3.30. And about four o'clock, this bear come in. It uh, gave me a perfect broadside shot. I just waited for the perfect shot. When it wasn't watching, I drew my bow and let it fly. It looked like a good hit. And the bear took off, went about 100, 120 yards. I heard, heard it crash down through the timber. and. Then we, uh, we did some tracking, found the blood, and followed the blood trail, uh, led us to the bear. Uh, a couple products we used for our hunt here, we've got some uh, Boremaster Raspberry Donut Bear Attractant. Works really good, it puts out a really fragrant, strong odor, lasts a long time. Have it there in the, on the bait site. Uh, Ready light fire puffs, uh, complete fire starter kit, magnesium flint and steel lighter, nine ready light fire puffs, three and a half to five minute burn time each. I wouldn't go out in the back country without some uh, in your day pack. Speaking of the packs, we've got the Rocky Mountain Pack Systems Yukon Pack that I really like. It fits well, it wears comfortable, holds a lot of gear uh, very comfortably. And uh, all this uh, had a big part in us getting this bear. Not a huge bear, but an average, a nice sow, about an average sow for central Idaho where we're at. I guess about 150 pounds, and, but couldn't pass it up. That is a pretty. Also, uh, my first bow kill. First bow kill. That is a pretty bear. I'll make a pretty rug. I just couldn't pass on this color phase. I mean, kind of a blonde. Uh, it's just a beautiful bear.